Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics part four. So we do this approximately the beginning of every month just to get an overview of where the total cryptocurrency market cap is. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also do check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the chart from from last month so we're going to first look at the chart from last month uh, to try to identify you know just the general trend that we've been observing uh from month to month right so we started this a few months ago and, I, and i'm trying to do a, a systematic update so we can follow it throughout the market cycle right we want to i know it can be a bit repetitive right because from one month to another the total cryptocurrency market cap uh, isn't going to change you know significantly at least during this phase of the market cycle but getting into the habit of looking at it now every month, I think will become quite useful, especially when we're, you know, when we're in this regime over here and when, when we're wondering when is the party over. So the first thing, you know, I, I want to do is we'll just go ahead and update it. So if you, if you look at the last chart that we had on August 31st, 2020, the market cap is 377 billion. This is not just Bitcoin, of course, this is the entire cryptocurrency market cap. And then the fair value logarithmic regression trend line was 411 billion. And, and because of that, it gave us a, an undervaluation of 8%. So we were undervalued by approximately 8%. Now, if we fast forward to the present day, we can see that our fair value is 422 billion, but the actual total cryptocurrency market capitalization is 338 billion, which gives us currently a, an undervaluation of 20%. So we're undervalued by 20%. So we've actually come down a bit since the last video. And remember, we said, we've said every single video, and, and I'll keep saying it, we're more likely to spend a, you know, a significant amount of time below the, the fair value fit uh, before we actually break above it, right? And if you look at the last cycle, you can see that we were below it starting in the beginning of 2015, and we didn't really break above it sustainably until sometime in, in the second quarter or so of 2017. We had a little spike above it right there. But for the most part, we were below this. And in this cycle, we came below it a little bit here, and then we had a bubble, a short-term speculative bubble above it. We came back below it, back up to it, a little bit of a resistance point. I mean, this is just a magical line at the end of the day. Uh, down and then back up and came back up to that point and then we started trending back down a little bit as as we know bitcoin you know went to 12k now it's back down less than 11k and the the rest of the cryptocurrency market tends to not do so well on the whole right of course there's some coins that, that have done great uh, over the last few weeks but on the whole the market cap has has taken a bit of a hit right it, it went from 377 billion on august 31st to 338 billion on august on October 1st okay so again we're trying to do a, a, a video every every month or so so around the beginning of the month is is the goal um, so so now right I mean we, I know I know a lot of people would like for it to just you know go go up immediately but as we as we said we we recognize that we're probably going to spend a, a significant amount of time just slowly moving up right slowly moving up um, and and it's going to take I think a significant amount of time. So again, if we if we look at the trend line, so if we take the 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 the, the price and divide it by the trend line, we can actually get the per, the valuation versus the trend line, right? So if it's if it's below this hundred percent line, it means it's undervalued, and if it's up here, it means that we're we're basically at our historic speculative bubble peak, right? These are our, the three major peaks that we've seen. And, and so obviously the, the better time to get into the market is when we're in these accumulation phases, right? So this one way over here, back at the very beginning when Bitcoin first came out, our uh, hit markets. Um, then again in, in, in you know, 2012, maybe, maybe early 2013 or so. Um, and then in 2015 and 2016, early 2017, we, we came down to it a little bit in 2018. And then again in 2019 and um, and and 2020, and I contend that you know there'll there'll even be t times right even in 2021 where we will likely be undervalued compared to the fair value logarithmic regression fit. So the point is again is like you know identifying the momentum shifts in the market. When is it time to get in? When is it time to get out? 
uh, you know, there's there's a lot of other asset classes besides crypto. Therefore, the, the channel will naturally pivot to talk about other asset classes as well. Once we, you know, once crypto really does not have the most um, attractive returns, like risk adjusted returns, it's just right now it seems to be in a, in a pretty good accumulation territory. Uh, be that as it may, I mean, it, you know, the, the the price could trend down in the short term. It's just that when you look at the the macro the macro scale, these are the years I think that it's 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 time to you know to to generate positions in the in the cryptocurrency asset class. And if we if we just draw the general trend lines from you know from the approximate bottom of each cycle, um, with respect to the fair value and and the regression fit, and remember the regression fit monotonically increases so the the bottom might not necessarily be the absolute bottom i mean you can see the bottom over here was significantly lower than here even though we know the 2018 capitulation took bitcoin to a lower price um, but the reason is because we're comparing it to the fair value fit which monotonically increases so that's the reason why this one's much lower and is why i contend that this capitulation was actually more significant than than the one we had over here um, so if we if we continue to project that out, as many of as many of you know, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer, right? And then approximately filling in these gaps, you can see the you know the um, the area inside these curves are is getting larger. So if we were to integrate this, you know, if we were to integrate this, we could actually solve for the area inside the curve and, and see how you know how it is increasing. Obviously, it doesn't follow the the price exactly. We could we could also integrate that as well if we wanted to numerically. But the, the idea is just to get the general trend drawing from you know from top to bottom to top, top bottom top, and then top bottom top. So that's the the general idea there. But we contend that I mean obviously it doesn't directly follow the price. So you know looking back at this right and looking back at the fair valuation uh, or the valuation versus the trend line, recognizing that 100% is the fair value. We you know you might you might wonder well what does this mean? If I mean what does it mean if it's say like you know, 800% overvalued, or maybe it peaks out at 600% overvalued. What does that mean? Well, again, if you if you look over here and say, well, if the fair value in 2023 is a, around $1 trillion, right, maybe just north of $1 trillion, if that's the fair value, and it's overvalued by, like, let's say 800%, then it's essentially going to put us around a, a speculative bubble cryptocurrency market capitalization peak of around 10 trillion, right? Of approximately 10 trillion if the fair value is just above 1 trillion and it's 800% overvalued. Therefore, it, it would it would seem that the the appropriate place to to put a theoretical peak in the next market cycle in say 2023 would be approximately 10 trillion dollars plus or minus a couple trillion. As I've as I've said many times, I'm sure many people just go to sleep at night wondering what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to be able to tell you exactly where it's going to peak, right? But we can speculate that based on, on historical trends and historical data, this is what we think is the most likely scenario. Of course, of course, there's, you know, there's other things can happen, right? It doesn't mean that this is what has to happen. It just means that this is what the data has suggested so far. And as I've been saying for, for a while now, I anticipate us, you know, staying below this trend line and at least hugging it for a while at the very least before we break back out to a new speculative bubble and I think we can you know we see that playing out despite all the heartache and pain that people have endured within this area we're basically just tracking the fair valuation that's all we're doing um, it's it's just essentially it's business as usual so if you're not sure what these peaks mean right this is 2,000% overvalued so it just means taking this price you know and, and essentially dividing by the fair value on this red line so that's that first peak the second this little peak right here is this one and then the next one is, is the one up here and then the third one would be this one. And so we're speculating that the fourth one will be somewhere over here. And if we were to draw that out, it would look something like that. S looking to see the difference between maybe the fair value and, and the, the peak approximately 800% or so, maybe a little bit less. And then coming back down to the fair value, maybe going back down below the fair value and continuing the cycle. Um, and, 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 you know, the smart money will, will dynamically sell is my guess. The dumb money will will be going all in at this point, saying you know what what is there what should I buy? Asking you know random people what they should buy, and then they'll be stuck with the bags uh, for a long time. And and then we're gonna want to take a break at that time. In my opinion, uh, you know there's still a little bit of a ways you can make money, of course, on the way down. But 
you know, if your if your main if your main goals are to, to spot trade to to make longer term momentum shift moves in the market, this would be the time to you know maybe take a step back from crypto, take those gains, cash it out, you know, have a better life, whatever that means. You know, use the use, use your profits if this does play out in a way that you know improves your life and your family's life, and maybe just get out of crypto for a little while. You know, I mean, and and this is what. It's not. I mean, it's not financial advice, of course, but I mean, there there will be another bear market um, after this market cycle, in my opinion. And 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 sometimes it's best to not chase those short term pumps that would probably come during that phase, uh, for the most part. Um, but to you know, you you took the risk during 2019, 2020, probably 2021 to accumulate the crypto. You hopefully reap the rewards in 2022, 2023, maybe even 2024, if it's even if, if it's even longer than what I would think. Um, so, you know, th- those that would be the phase, I think, of reaping the rewards. And then and then from that point, right, you, you took the extra risk and in investing in cryptocurrency when most of the world still thought it was it was silly. Uh, so then at that time, you want to protect that wealth, right? You want to get that wealth out of that market, this highly speculative market, um, once it does hit that point, and then you want to protect it, right? You want to put it in safer investments, whether it's you know mutual funds, real estate, which I mean I don't even I mean you could argue the how how safe those are, but I mean they're generally safer than cryptocurrency for the most part. Um, and so just like diversify is is what I would say, uh, and this is generally you know the strategy right of the channel. It's we're, we're, we primarily jump into the cryptoverse during this phase of the market cycle, but as we as we move on. And, and the markets change and we see, you know, we see the if we see this writing on the wall, then the momentum shift of the market is going to be from, you know, an accumulation zone and a slow move up to a, a ton of sell pressure. And, and it's no longer be it's no longer going to be the friendly neighborhood bears that come out to play, you know, to push Bitcoin down a little bit after short term moves up. It's going to be, you know, really angry bears and. I'm going to be one of them, to be completely honest, right? I mean, at this point, it's it'll be time to to really add sell pressure to the market and, and say, you know what, I think this market cycle is exhausted, and and it's time to time to shift gears, offload, you know, for me anyways, offload some of this crypto, put it into other markets, and and wait for a, for a better entry point. So if you guys like the content. Please subscribe to the channel. Remember, we do have the Telegram channel. If you're looking for a community, you can check that out. We have over 6,000 people in it. If you want access to the premium list, which when, you know, which gives you access to uh, weekly reports, weekly videos, uh, like that are that I put a lot of work into. Also, the alert channel, the Telegram alerts channel, the private Telegram chat room, the uh, the risk dashboard, and the dynamic DCA dashboard. Then make sure you sign up at intothecryptoverse.com. Uh, and and you can get access uh, to that. So and you can also pay with cryptocurrency to get, to get a discount. Um, so make sure you sign up if if you're wanting if you're wanting access to to more exclusive content. Uh, and and just remember that as we as we move, push on in the market cycle, I will be doing less and less public videos and and more you know premium stuff. Right, increasing the content that goes that goes to that part. So at the very least, subscribe to the channel. Please give the video a thumbs up to help it out in the algorithms. Um, And I will see you guys next time. Bye.